Hi, my name is Chris Smithy. I'm a senior systems engineer here at Landcope. Today what we're going to talk to you about is network troubleshooting, specifically from the help desk environment, to work on problem resolution for that call that everybody gets where they say, hey, I hate you, the network sucks. So what we're going to talk about here is the ability for people within the networking team not to be dependent upon multiple disparate tools within the organization. We're going to make it so that you have all the information needed required in a single interface rather than having to go to disparate tools with multiple different teams trying to troubleshoot this problem. One of the scenarios that our customers frequently give us is that in these situations, it often requires something like a packet capture tool to be able to get to the crux of this problem. Now, when we do this, many times we can't get the packet capture tool deployed quickly enough to solve the problem. So we end up in this endless cycle where we've got this Groundhog Day solution. We've got to second guess what's going to occur beforehand so that we can get the needed pieces of the infrastructure in place to monitor this solution. We start today's look at StealthWatch with what we call a startup dashboard. Now in this particular screen, we see overall trending of network traffic flowing into and out of the network, within the network, and then current utilization of the various interfaces we have in use in the network. Now, taking a step back here, we're going to start with a particular problem that um, many help desks might encounter. So in this particular scenario, we'll run through one where Adam Powers has called in and told us some very colorful things that he thinks about our network because his particular application is slow. So in this particular instance, I'm going to right click on our ID1000, come down to user identity, and from here we can explore everything about a particular user based upon their username. So in this instance, we just ask Adam what his sign into the network is, right? What he logs into whenever he connects to his machine. He says, A Powers. We say, okay, great. What we're gonna do for you, Adam, is just type in your name, click OK, and then we'll be presented with your IP address. Here we find that the machine that Adam is logged into is 10.201.3.83, which just so happens to be in our terminal server zone. So to find out more about this particular machine and its experience on the network, we simply double-click this IP address to go to what we call a host snapshot. We start our look at the host snapshot on the Exporter Interfaces tab. Here we see a filtered list of the various interfaces we found on that startup dashboard that shows us just the interfaces that Adam is having to use to traverse the network. So if one of these interfaces were congested, we could simply double click on the interface to be brought to what we call an interface dashboard. So let's do that now. Here we find all of the important information required to troubleshoot this particular network problem that Adam seems to be encountering. Right? In this instance, we see that the cause for the outbound congestion on this interface is this session between log.mtu.edu and 10.201.3.83, which just so happens to be Adam's terminal server machine. In this case, we see that they're consuming 7.3 megabits per traffic of the overall traffic moving across this link. So not really enough to create congestion in this particular scenario, but but note the other important pieces of information on the screen with us here. We see what the traffic trending for this interface has looked like over the last 24 hours broken down per service. So from this we can determine, you know, was this a sudden spike in traffic or is this something that's been going off and on all day and something that we really need to pay very close attention to. We also found it was important to present to you the previous seven days worth of traffic on this same set of information here because this allows you to determine is it something that occurs every day around this time or is this problem unique to this particular day of the week or day of the month. Now in this scenario, as we noted previously, the interfaces aren't extremely overutilized. So we might need a little bit more information from Adam based upon what it is that he's trying to do and what types of problems he's experiencing. Once we have that information, we generally go to top active flows to find out more about what his particular problem is. In this scenario, we see all sorts of sessions coming into and out of Adam's machine. We see how much data has left the machine itself, how much data has come back from whatever he was communicating to, and what the average bitrate for those particular sessions are. Now, Note also that if we have one of our flow sensors introduced here, we can provide statistics about network latency as well as server response time. So we're giving you round trip statistics as well as server response time. This helps us further eliminate what the potential cause of issue would be for Adam's session. If we had, for instance, uh, 4,000 milliseconds for server response time and 
you know, as we show here, one millisecond for a network latency or average rate round trip time, we could quickly determine that the cause of Adam's particular problem was server response time. It was taking too long for the server to field the result of that query back to the user. So now we've empowered the help desk with all the information needed to solve this particular problem. In production, we find that at least 90% of the problems can be resolved with this very simple process from a help desk view. When they can't, we've given the help desk all of the information needed to supply the upper levels of support with the information at hand.